electronic music. When you hear the words, what pops into your mind? To a lot of people, electronic music is associated with a clear beat. It's rigid, heavily quantized music, often a bit formulaic and also often quite commercial. But electronic music can be so much more. And in today's Summer of Synths episode, I want us to explore that. We're gonna explore how to break out of heavily quantized electronic music into the realm of synthetableism, mod bap, and experimental electronic beats. I want us to give a warm welcome to today's guest. He is here to show his synth setup and perform with it. Give a warm welcome to Kipski. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. I'm going to show you my system, guide you a bit through it and play some music. I'm making music combining beats and scratching. So it's called mod bap, modular boom bap. For the scratching, I'm using synthetableism, which allows me to actually scratch control voltage instead of scratching an audio sample. which really blew my mind and it's still blowing my mind as I'm still having a lot of fun with it and recording new music and releasing a lot of new music with it. So let's dive into it. A very important aspect of the whole rig is my phase modules. And these two are wireless. It's a bit like a wireless mic. Instead of a mic sing signal, they're sending and receiving pitch and timecode sing signals. So I'm not using any timecode at the moment. I usually I use the, the like a custom pitch tone that's coming from the face. Here you have the, the receiver and it's sending out the pitch tone to my LATIC amp. So the phase signal gets amplified before it goes into the disting pitch to CV algorithm and then it goes basically everywhere like this pitch cv from the turntable going everywhere the herb verb is really important for the synthetableism part the scratching part because i figured out a way how to make it swell by spinning the turntable like this Lots of uses for that in my live set, as well as my recordings. Really fun to play with. Also worth noting is the Turing machine. And I use it to, yeah, to program the bass lines on the fly using the bass voice of the Pulsar 23. I'm using the CV loopers of the Pulsar a lot because they are really quick and intuitive. There's no quantization whatsoever, so I can use my own personal timing as a drummer. bit too many wires uh, in my system right now because I'm rehearsing in a few days with Bram Hakkens, my drummer. Together we are the group Wavetabler. And in this live group, we'll be playing this rig live and he will be triggering my, the Pulsar voices with his acoustic drums as well. I'm a big fan of dub music. 
So I put a little bus delay on an auxiliary on my performance mixer. For my live show with Wavetabler, I use the Bitbox a lot. Here's four ADSRs, A140 by Dupfer. I needed four because I have the chord by Qubit version 2 and I've split the chords. It spits out into separate notes and I wanted to have control over the separate notes of the chord. So now I have a little patch going on uh, with my ER101 triggering the ADSRs. But the notes are not coming from the ER101 sequencer but uh, they're coming from the chord, Qubit chord module. Also very important here is the bare modules with my sweet logo. Really useful for life. Uh, manipulation it's like a big macro controller for cv out scalable offsetable and with directional switches also cv in so i can patch in the turntable cv and use the turntable as a big knob so yeah it's really great use it a lot arbhar beautiful module for some soundscapey ambient stuff here's the er101 this is some master effects from Modbab modular, so I, this is like a little keyboard for pitches, like transposing, also playing melodies while scratching. And of course, the Ginkgo Synthesia turntable mono amp to actually scratch the old school way with the needle, which sometimes I also like to do, like the old school wiki wiki. Well, not forgetting this one, the Ginkgo Synthesia battle crossfader that I'm using as a crossfader to be able to actually scratch. And yeah, let's go. So this is the old school scratching. Twist back to synthetism. in the side chain. And now it's fun to do some live drumming on the pulsar. Yeah, this is basically how I play my music and of course I edit it afterwards uh, to make some tracks. Do some post-production a little bit, but most of the stuff I like to do live in one take. And then just keep the best bits and then hopefully have something to release later on. What drew me to Kipsky's music and inviting him to Summer Sins was not just that I really enjoyed his music, it's also that I was very curious about his his way of approaching live performances using modular, using synthesizers, because I felt there was this interesting combination of having control, but at the same time letting go of control. So I asked him about it, if he could explain a bit more how he goes into performing live. So basically what it comes down to is this. Before I start, 
I tune my whole rig, I tune every harmonic sound module, the chords, for example, I tune it to the root note of my bass sounds. But the essential point is I don't use a sequencer as a main central control hub to play all modules and to uh, keep everything in time. I only use the ER101 to trigger some notes of the chord. That's like a small part of the whole uh, patch. For the rest, it's clocked CV loopers of the Pulsar. The Turing machine is a CV looper in a way, and everything is in sync and it runs. If I program a beat live dur during a set, if I let it go, let it run, and I do nothing, it gets boring. But if I let it run and start tweaking all my macro controls, my filters, and doing the synth tabulism scratching, uh, controlling stuff with my turntable and transposing the chords together with the basses. It gets really interesting in a compositional way. So it's like instant composing. During the set it may get out of tune, some, some stuff may be detuned. That's also that's really nice. It's easier to start in tune and detune than to start your set with a detuned oscillators out of tune and trying to get it in tune during t during your set. It's it's that's not a wise thing to do. The key is, I think, to be able to play your rig, but also letting go of certain factors of control. So you just let it go, let things happen as they happen. If you feel there needs to be a change up, make the change up with the modulation, with the transposition, uh, with building like uh, swoosh soundscapes, building tension, practice doing drops, doing switches. And after a while, after you, after you practice, you may notice this will get much easier. So it's a combination of letting go of control and keeping the whole thing in control. It's quite a challenge, but it's really fun. If it works out, it's really fun and I love playing like this. Thanks, Bo. Thank you so much for that explanation. And before we end today's Summer of Synths episode, I also want to say that I've been super, super inspired by just working with Kipski on this video here and also listening to his music, looking into how he performs live. And I've taken a lot of that with me into building this setup here that I'm working on, it's actually a dual Pulsar 23 setup at the moment. I have really come to like the CV loopers. I wasn't a big fan at first, but it's something that really, I don't know, it's something where I have control, but at the same time I don't. So I can't just quantize the beats endlessly. And I just wanted to end the video with a few examples inspired very much by the music of Kipski. So here we go.
you enjoyed today's Summer of Sins episode. To me, it's been a lot about exploring, letting go of control, letting go of quantization, and just, I don't know, going with the flow, uh, enjoying sounds for what they are, exploring musical expression, and getting away from the kind of sterileness that often comes with electronic music. And I don't think it has to be that way. I think we all should push ourselves to get out of that quantized comfort zone. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you go and check out Kipski. I've linked all his socials down in the description. And as always, a big thank you for supporting my channel, supporting the guests that I have on, and supporting Summer of Sins. Have a great day and a great summer.